practice 10, 550 flex this morning in the swamp. It was a beautiful day. Uh, guys were getting after it early in the morning. And we had a great day, did some four minute. Offense was up three. Had to maintain possession, created a punt situation to uh, where you, you know, you got to, like, kind of like Tennessee last year, you got to get the ball off and then you got to go play defense. And third down, a lot of special teams work. It was great to see. Uh, 550 this morning, you wonder why they're good players. Matt Elam, Jelani Jenkins, and Josh Evans out there running with the football team. It's a, it tells them why they're good players. Practice 11 tomorrow will be scrimmage in the swamp. Uh, tomorrow morning we'll get, get started about 10 o'clock. Looking forward to getting, some, getting off the field, uh, moving the ball, creating some red zone coming out, some different situations one minute, you know, a lot of different looks for our guys to continue to improve to be a good situational team. You know, as I'm thinking about it, two opportunities this morning. We're in one minute. Jeff makes two nice throws, and we had two receivers in situations. You had opportunities to get out of bounds. We had to burn a timeout in one situation. In another situation, we didn't have a timeout. We had to clock the ball and waste it down. So just so many of those things come up in these uh, tight practices. we got to be smarter uh, in those situations. Injury report, Johnny Townsend had surgery on his wrist. He's going to be fine. It was wear and tear uh, through – the years there, and uh, I felt like we wanted to go ahead and put a pin in it, and he'll be back in, I don't know, eight weeks, ten weeks, something like that. Should not affect him at all. Uh, Gideon Ajabe does not need surgery on his sh shoulder, but if we had two more weeks of spring, he would probably be back, but with only one more week, uh, we're going to probably hold him. Keanu Neal is back, but limited, and I hope Rod Johnson will be cleared Monday. And past that, I think we're, that's about where we are. <laughs> Any questions? All right, let's go. With Rod's injury, something that maybe didn't come to him progress, but you thought it would, so like, you thought it would be better. No, it's a doctor's call. I don't have anything to do with that. That's all on the doc. So. You sounded pretty hopeful he could kind of make a dent on the offensive line. Yeah, and I think, you know, when he's been out there, he's been very productive, you know, but you got to play. It's part, of, it's part of the evaluation. If you don't practice, you can't play. Uh, I think we have too much separation between our first group and second group, and that's on both lines of scrimmage, the offense and defense. I'm uh, extremely uh, concerned about some snapping issues that continue to occur. You know, I think that, you know, the first couple practices and uh, some newness in there, I, I can kind of get that. But after a while, we got to we got to move past that. But right now, we're repping Max Trip Thurman and uh, Cam Dillard at center. Trip's also playing a guard position. Uh, pleased with Humphreys and how he's playing at left tackle. Pleased with Chaz Green how he's playing at right tackle. I think Trenton Brown's doing an outstanding job in order to get our best five on the field. He may be a guy that we move. Uh, you know, Tyler Moore's done some nice things. Uh, so uh, just real pleased, you know, for the most part. Uh, Antonio Riles is a guy that we've looked at at guard today. Matter of fact, that's not a permanent move. That's something we wanted to create some depth. You know, I, I told Antonio he's a good football player. He's a great kid. And uh, he doesn't need to be standing by me uh, come fall. We need to get him on the field and get him in an opportunity. So that's, that's what we're going to experiment. That's what I told him. We're not getting ready for a game right now. This is a, what spring is for, to, to experiment and look. And, and uh, I thought he did some really good things today, just moving around. Coach Summers got behind him a couple times and lined him up and told him where to go. And uh, so he's a big body that uh, is a good athlete. And I think at the guard position would, would fit very well. Not that he was not doing well at defensive tackle. But you know, we got to continue to build depth on, on both lines of scrimmage, and that's the way to do it. So I think that we just have too much separation right now between that first group and where we are from there. <clears throat> Trenton, probably, you know, right now. We're not, nothing's set in stone. We, we're discussing as a staff right now after the scrimmage tomorrow when we hit into practices 12, 13, uh, kind of look at some different combinations of guys. Uh, some different looks. So, I mean, right now, Trenton was kind of the guy we kind of uh, talked about a little bit, but I mean, we're not set in stone on that at this time. Tyler Moore said that his uh, elbow is still a little painful and sore. Is that, is that something that you expected, or is he kind of playing through that because it's important? No, he's playing through it because it's important. And, uh, you know, you got to give the guy a lot of credit. He, he, he did no lifting prior to spring with that uh, arm. And he's got a, a brace that's inhibiting him pretty, pretty tough as far as being able to get his hands on people and things. He will not have to use that next fall. But we just got to build his strength back. You, there's, you can see a different strength level with him as opposed to where he was in the fall. Who's kind of stepping up and taking over in that role? 
It is. I think that, you know, from a tight end standpoint, uh, you know, Clay and Tevin have been guys that have played a lot of football for us. Uh, you know, uh, we'd like to have a more explosive guy at the position. Uh, and we've looked at pro possibly Pittman and Showers or guys when we go to four wides. But, you know, you kind of give the defense a little bit of an advantage when you know, when they know you can't create a three man block in surface or, or a six man uh, or seven man protection when they don't have a tight end body in there. So Hunter Joyer is going to be a guy that will figure in that role. Gideon was going to figure in that role and will continue. Uh, as we move forward, DeAndre Goolsby is a guy that I've been pleased with. And I don't know how much of a role he will have moving forward, but he's, we're very pleased he's here. Uh, so I think we're kind of still searching a little bit there. You know, I think that that's something that uh, that's a, a position that uh, we need to be able to have a guy that can seal the edges. We're not asking him to be a dominating blocker, uh, but we need to be able to have a guy that can match up on a linebacker or a safety and win in coverage. And, uh, you know, that, that's something we need to continue to, to improve. Well, we, you know, he, he will learn the B because one of our, you know, we think one of our best personnel groupings will be three wides and two backs. So he's, he will learn the, both the A and the B position as far as the, the running back slot and the B position. That, that'll be something that we told him before spring that we felt like would fit well. Matt's got great hands, and he's a guy that can do some of those things. But, uh, you know, we're going to be a primary run will be an inside zone team, and he runs the inside zone extremely well. Matt's extremely bright, so he will be able to play both positions. But... One of our best personnel groupings is three wides and two backs uh, because of our backfield. We feel like we've got some talented guys. So let's get both of those guys in at the same time and, and try and create multiple formations and motions from there. So I think that's certain we'll look at in the fall. Mm -hmm. Will he feel better about potential number of playmakers on offense? Absolutely. I think that uh, you look at uh, <clears throat> just from a standpoint, I think receivers may have had their best day maybe Wednesday out at practice there. You know, LaTroy Pittman made a big catch in one minute, uh, really made a nice play there. Uh, Chris Thompson made two really nice plays on deep balls. De Demarcus Robinson made a nice play on a deep ball. Valdez Showers made a nice play on a seven cut down there in their overtime situation. Um, so I think that a lot of those guys have stepped up and, and really come on. Ahmad Fullwood continues to come on. <clears throat> so I think I feel much more comfortable. And then I think you can you know, get Andre back. And there's some things we'll, we'll do with him when we get him back as far as some speed sweep things that we've done in the past that I think can create some misdirection for our offense. And running back, too, it seems like you've got more potential. Yep. I think, you know, again, we've been very pleased with that position. It was, that's a different, uh, you know, angles for the running back in this offense is different than what we've been doing previously. Uh, so that is a little different, but I've been very pleased with Kelvin and Mac and, and Mark and uh, how those guys have picked it up. Hunter plays something back there some. Uh, so we've been really pleased. And Adam Lane keeps coming along. You know, Adam's done a nice job. Adam's a hard guy to tackle. He's got a low center of gravity. He can really push the pile in some situations. So we feel good there and obviously getting Matt back. I'm hoping Brandon Powell, he has his uh, x-ray Monday. Now, he will not per participate in any contact situation, but I hope to at least get him back and let him catch some punts and – uh, getting some skeleton periods in a non-contact situation. Hope to get him back out there. Well, with uh, Calvin, he's been a guy that we've seen on the eighth grade. What was he like when he wasn't getting you know, the carries right off the bat last year? Very humble. I mean, just a hard-working guy. Never said a whole lot. Uh, it's not, you know, Calvin's a team guy, and, you know, he's been, been raised right. And, uh, uh, but he's a, he's a really good young man. He's all about the team. He's all about the University of Florida. Uh, and, you know, he knew there were some things in protection he needed to clean up moving forward. It was nothing that was, uh, you know, that he wasn't willing to work at and didn't, and didn't recognize. And, and that's normally with good players, that's kind of the deal. They realize there's things they need to work on and there's things that they need to improve on. And that's, that's why he is a good player. He's talented, but he's, he realizes the things he needs to do. Well, we've always, you know, felt that was important. Uh, so I don't think there's any question. When you have a running quarterback, you know, no different than when, you know, I was at Texas after <clears throat> Vince Young was there. Uh, and to listen to Mac and those guys talk about, um, you know, w w picking spots to run the football. We did with Colt McCoy, uh, was a very athletic guy that we did some things with. You know, obviously when Urban then were here with Tim, you had to pick your spots. You know, you, you, you can only take so many hits in this league. I never, you know, forget. Uh, I believe it was 07. I was a defense coordinator at Auburn, and Florida went to Oxford, and not design runs, 
but whether it was drop back scramble, they got into a kill the clock situation at the end. Florida was up, and Tim carried the ball about thirty something times in that ball game. All right, and uh, and and there's no question he took some shots in that game. And one of the first third downs was about third and seven. They scrambled, and Zach Etheridge came out of the top over on our sideline, and and we were able to to make that stop. Which I don't know if it's a if it's a truly healthy Tim Tebow, we don't make that stop. And then late in the game, if you'll remember, fourth quarter, you know Florida got they had to go they had to get a score, and they took it right down the field about 80 yards, and they ran the quarterback uh, uh, power and the quarterback counter about 10 times in a row. We couldn't stop them. I mean, you know, but. That's the dilemma you get in as a coach is how many times you letting this guy carry the ball uh, because of how many hits he's going to be taking. There's no question we had success in that game defensively at Auburn because of the previous week. I mean, that's, that's easy. So uh, that's something that we talk about, and we, you know, we go into each game with a, with a plan of what we're going to do, but you've got to always develop those, those backups. <laughs> well, you know, we go into every, you know, tra training camp and we, well, I call it the green light, yellow light, red light. So the green light guys, we can go. That means Brad and, and DJ can roll them. The yellow light guys means we, with a little bit of caution here, we need to make sure we got a good call list that we feel comfortable what they can execute situationally. I mean, if we've got a team backed up, that's a critical time for points. We want to make sure we get the stop. We don't want to have a mistake made. Uh, and then red light guys means we got to really talk about before we put in the game. That may be a situation of a red shirt. You know, we, we, we decided we want a red shirt, and only under certain circumstances we're going to put a young man in the game. Um, so, uh, with that being said, that we need more green light guys right now. The guys that we feel free to roll in there. Uh, with John Bullard playing inside and out, that provides you automatic depth. I feel good about Brian Cox. Uh, Taven Bryan's a guy that continues to come on and get better and better, and he's only going to continue to improve. Uh, but we feel comfortable with him, not assignment-wise right now, but as far as technique, fundamentals, and effort. And that's really what we're looking for. Joey Ivan needs to continue to come on, Caleb Brantley, Jane R. Bostwick. Uh, then, then you look on top of that at getting Darius and Leon back in the fold uh, back in the fall. Uh, you know, you, you feel good about the potential depth you will have up front. Uh, we need a little more pass rush. You know, Dante's a guy that can win one-on-one -on -one in the rush on the edge. Right now, I don't feel totally com you know, comfortable that there's another guy out there. And Ron Ball may be a guy that will figure into that, who has done those sort of things before. So, again, I, you know, those are – I think there's a, some potential there, but t potential can be a bad word for you at times. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that there's a – you know, there's a, a learning curve any anytime something is new, whether you're coming from Fort Lauderdale or coming from Casper, Wyoming. And I think he's adjusted extremely well. He's really smart. Uh, he knew he wanted to come here when he came and visited the campus a summer ago. Uh, he committed to us immediately and never blinked. And so we're, we're extremely pleased to have him.